In today's video, I want to show you guys how you can save a minimum of 90,000 rent on income tax for your small business. Good day. My name is Andrew Gouvier. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008, but I've also been an entrepreneur since 1993. So I've been around the block a couple of times when it comes to income tax. And today I want to show you guys something that's in the, in the Income Tax Act where you can save a minimum of 90,000 rand on income tax on your, for your small business. So before I continue with my presentation, remember to give the video a like and just remember to subscribe to my channel as well. If maybe you're looking for a new accountant for your business, remember to get in touch with us as well. We've got a website, saaccountingnetwork.co.za, and we've got a list of many different accountants all over South Africa that can, that can help your small business with your accounting needs. Yes, so let me continue. Let me jump down to my computer, then I can show you exactly how this trick works or the way that you can save 90,000 Rand as a minimum on income tax on your company. Right, <clears throat> let me quickly show you what I've prepared for you guys today. So, the talk that I want to have it with you guys is how to save a minimum of 90,000 rent in income tax in South Africa or company tax. And the first thing that I want to mention is in Section 12E of the Income Tax Act, they talk about a certain section there, which they call Small Business Corporation. So, the short abbreviation for that is SPC or SPC rates that they refer to. So, the big benefit, there's two main benefits over there. The first one is that they use lower tax rates, which I'm going to show you just now. And then you'll see how much tax you can actually save on that and the second thing that is really beneficial is that for small businesses you're allowed to use faster depreciation rates for your business as well so let me quickly explain to you or to quickly show to you guys how it works so for a small normal business you know that your company tax rates for small businesses just came down from 28 percent at the moment it is 27 percent but if you use small business corporation tax rates and what happens is the first 95,000 rand of your profit, you pay 0% tax on that profit over there. Then from 95,000 to 365, you only pay 7% tax. Then 365 to 550,000, you pay 21% tax. Then only from 550,000 rand up, you start paying a 27%. So there's a big benefit and I'm going to show you guys by the use of an example now quickly how that works. Um, if my slide will go. Yes, here we go. So the example, if you look at a normal company tax or normal company tax rate, let's say for instance you use a business and you've got a profit of 550,000 rand, then you can see tax at 27%, the current tax rate means now that the tax that you would have to pay on 550,000 rand profit will be 148,500 rand. But if you get it right, you use the small business tax rates, the small business corporation tax rates, Profit 550,000 Rand. Remember the tax that you're going to be using as a variable tax rate. So the first 90,000 Rand is zero, then it jumps to 7%, then 21%. Then the total tax due on that profit of 550,000 now is only 57,698 Rand, which gives you a tax saving of almost 91,000 Rand. And I'm sure <coughs> that any small business would go for that. So that is a really big tax benefit. If you can use this thing, it is amazing. Go for it. Let me quickly explain to you. So that is the first thing that's important is the saving of 91,000 Rand. And that is for any small business that can qualify for these lower tax rates. I mean, that's a huge tax saving if you just look at that. Then the second thing, the faster depreciation rates. Remember, um, what happens is the receipt of revenue has got these guides. And for every type of asset that you can basically imagine of having in a business, they go to the craziest stuff like calculators and computers, air conditioners. So they have this long table and in that guide they prescribe which, which depreciation rates we have to use for business. Remember the depreciation, we can write off the cost of that asset over a certain period of time and that, that write off that we, that, that we put through the, the financial statements on the tax calculation lowers the tax rate that they, or the tax that you have to pay because it brings your taxable income down. So just my example that I want to show you guys of years, I, I just said it depends if you've got a, a small manufacturing business and you've got sewing machines. Now, if I look at the tax guide, such as for sewing machines, we have to depreciate it over a period of six years. So <clears throat> if you look at what they say for small business corporation tax rates, sewing machines, or any type of asset, you can see under 4.2 of the Income Tax Act, the 12E1, and 1A says, under Section 12E, two sets of accelerated depreciation rates potentially apply to the assets of a small business corporation. 
subject to certain conditions, assets which are used directly in the process of manufacturing or in the process of a similar nature may qualify for 100% right of any year of assessment in which the asset is brought into use for the first time. Assets that do not fall into this category may qualify for a right of a period of three years at a rate of 50, then 30, then 20% in the respective years. So just if you look at those accelerated tax rates, let me quickly show you with an example. So let's say, for instance, we've got a manufacturing entity, and in our business, we're doing a turnover of 3 million rand for the year. And now if you look at the expenses that we've got, let's say, for instance, we brought a million rands worth of sewing machines, then you can see that the depreciation in manufacturing equipment as 1 million rand times 16.67% because remember we're writing it off over 6 years which means that we can use a deduction of 166,667. So now if I've got other expenses of 833,000 rand then I can see my total expenses would be 1 million rand which give me a taxable income of 2 million rand. So now if I had to go apply the tax rate of 27% to that 2 million rand, then I can see my tax payable for the year is going to be 540,000 rand. But now let me show you quickly what happens when we're using those um, faster uh, depreciation rates. So they're exactly the same example. We've got a turnover of 3 million rand. Now, this time our depreciation on manufacturing equipment, because we're using it in manufacturing, we can write off 100% in the year that we buy that asset. So now, that expense jumps from 166,000 up to a million rand. Our other expenses is 833,000 rand, so our total expenses now becomes 1.83 million rand. So, the, which means we've got a taxable income of 1.16 million rand, which means that our tax, according to the Small Business Corporation tax rates, now is 224,000 rand. So, just going back to the previous slide, you can see there our tax at 27% was 540,000 rand. So, that means that we've got a tax saving of 315,000 rand if you can qualify for these smaller or these small business corporation tax rates. So, that is a big advantage if you can qualify for that. So, what do you need to have in place? Um, before we can qualify for those lower tax rates, there are four requirements. The first one is a legal entity requirement. Second one is a gross income requirement. Third one, shareholding requirement. Fourth one is a business activity requirement. But I say once again, please check with Sash or with a tax practitioner before you just go and tick this box on your return to say that you want to use small business corporation tax rates. Because if you try and use it, when you are not allowed to use it, you can get into serious trouble with the receiver of revenue. So just be careful. You must make sure that you get proper advice on this thing. So requirement number one, legal entity requirement. So one of the requirements to qualify as a small business corporation is that the taxpayer must be a juristic person in form of a close corporation, a cooperative, a cooperative, a private company or personal liability company. So all that basically says is that sole proprietors, unfortunately you guys can't qualify for small business corporation because remember that you're already using lower tax rates and company tax rates for your tax returns on the lower tax bracket. So that you'll see that the tax brackets will run very similar to what the personal tax brackets run. So that's the first requirement, it must be a legal entity. Second thing is a gross income requirement and there they said that the Turnover of the business aren't allowed to be more than 20 million rand because as nurse is more than 20 million rand then such says that you're not a small business anymore. You're starting to fall into a different category so therefore you can't use these lower tax rates. Um, third one, shielding requirements. So this is also a place that you've got to be really, really careful of. So Section 12E provides that all holders of shares of members as appropriate of acquiring a qualifying entity must at all times during their year of assessment be natural persons. No part of the share capital of members' interest of a small business corporation can therefore be held by a juristic person such as another company. And the holders of shares in or members of a qualifying entity may not at any time during the particular year of assessment hold any shares or have any interest in the equity of another company as defined in section 1 and then they give a little exemption over there. So two things that they say then as the first thing that it must be if you've got a company and you've got another company owning shares in your company then you're out the bus then you can't qualify because the ownership of the company is not a natural person so it's got to be a natural person and then the second thing that they say over there is that if you own more than one company then you're out the bus then you can't qualify as a small business corporation so you must always double check with SIPSI just to make sure that your name doesn't pop up on any other companies before you start using these uh, tax rates. The problem that you've got is <coughs> such 
You tick the box to say that you want to use lower tax rates. Now, SARS will allow it maybe four or five years. And then after year five, they might come back and say, listen, let's go check quickly the records for the previous years. Now, if for the previous four years you were a member of another company or of another CC or, of a, or director of another company, and they pick it up, then they're going to reassess all the previous years, plus they're going to hit you with penalties and interest. So just be careful. Just don't tick the box if you're not 100% sure that you only own one company. So that's really, really important. Um, so that's the third requirement. Fourth one, business activity requirement. So, and they say that the first thing is that more, not more than 20% of your income is allowed to be from investment income or of rendering personal services. So the main thing that SAS is trying to promote with these tax rates, these small business corporation tax rates, is they're trying to promote um, small manufacturing entities and people buying and selling stuff. So guys who render personal services, accountants, graphic designers, lawyers, um, web designers, all those type of guys, they obviously, they, they, this tax legislation is not written to benefit those guys. It's people for purely that uh, that's got small businesses that buy and sell stuff or people that's manufacturing stuff. That is the main purpose of this piece of legislation. So unfortunately, if you are in one of those areas over there, then I think you're probably going to be out the bus as well. Sasha's got a guide on the website for turnover tax. So if you could look at the definitions on that guide, I'll probably share it in the description of the video as well. But there they give you a breakdown of what they say as, as, as personal services. So they've got a long list of stuff over there. So please go check out that guide if you're not sure. But once again, if you're not sure whether you should be using these tax rates, chat to your accountant, make an appointment with one of our accountants as well, and we'll also chat to you through the whole process. <coughs> yes, so just... The general uh, in general, personal services refers to a service rendered for which the income derived is mainly a reward for personal efforts or skills of an individual. So if that is you, then you're out the bus, you can't qualify. But there's an exemption. They said that if you've got three more, three or more full-time employees working for you, that's not related to your business. So it can't be your mom, can't be your sister, can't be your brother, can't be your uncle, all those type of guys have got to be purely independent people from you. So if you've got more than three full-time employees working for you for the full year, then you can still qualify as a small business corporation. Otherwise, unfortunately, you're out the bus if you do any type of personal services. Yes, so I think that is in a nutshell it. Just a disclaimer, also work through the full guide in the description below. So if you go check out the SASH website, go search for small business corporations, Go through that, that that note that they've got on the website. You can download a copy of my website as well. I've got it there on the company tax rate. And once again, please check with SARS, your accountant and tax consultant, before making the final decision if you qualify as a small business corporation. Um, yes, and then if you guys do have any comments or any questions, feel free to ask it in the, in the description of the video or in the comment section of the video below. Once again, just remember to give the video a like. Remember to subscribe to my channel and check out all the other videos that I've got on the YouTube channel for you. Thanks for watching.